Okay, so we're doing a video about um, uh, painting a peacock. Um, it is a loose painting. I like loose painting uh, more than anything else. Um, I started by sketching the peacock first uh, and then spraying some water on the um, uh, on the paper outside the peacock itself. So just spraying water, not completely wet the paper, but just have enough um, water to be uh, wet. Um, and then I add the Brusho Crystal watercolors, and this is the emerald green. And the Brusho Crystal watercolors um, come in the component of the color itself. So you can see some yellow and some uh, blue, and when they blend together, they give this very nice green. Uh, and then after that, I went and kind of thought about how I want to distribute the color, leaving some areas where the crystal dropped, and I think that's what makes it really beautiful. Otherwise, it was really cathartic just to look at the crystals and how they float on the paper. It's, it's really, really nice. Um, and now I'm just wetting the paper with my 12-size uh, um, Pristine Heritage brush. And I use the Canson um, Cold Press 140 um, uh, watercolor paper. So again, here I am applying a little bit of brush of crystal colors, and you can see how they nicely... Uh, float around and I added some to the other side as well and I just wait and see what happens um, it's just so beautiful to watch um, so the way that uh, I can make another video on the brush of crystals um, watercolors but uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about it and how to use them uh, and if you can hear my kids um, banter in the background I do apologize Okay, so then I decided that I will go, there's a, a lot of water, you can see the water is pooling on the edge there. Um, I added some water there just to mix some of the colors and then I'm going to go with the paper towel and just dab the excess water. Um, but I truly love those Brusho Crystal watercolors. The way to dab the colors is just to go by the um, uh, edge of the towel. And now I'm doing the same process again. I am. Um, I waited for the background to dry out, um, and then I'm now just wetting the papers and taking some phthalo green um, or blue and mixed with green, uh, both phthalo green and phthalo uh, blue together, and I'm just dropping the paint um, in very high concentration. So what I'm picking up, I'm picking up a very highly concentrated paint. And that will give you the very nice drop. If your brush has more water than paint, this the effect that's going to happen. You're going to have a water pedal, but you're not going to have that deep, nice, um, uh, deep, nice effect of the colors. So I do recommend if you want to have that nice drop of color to go with very um, concentrated pigments. So here I'm just going around and just painting the areas around the eyes. Uh, and I'm, I'm deliberately making it as dot just to give that appearance of the feather like. So I'm just dotting um, around. I'm not, you know, making a brush stroke. I'm just making um, continuous dot. And now I'm bringing just some water, dragging some of the colors up there. Um, and I do like the Princeton Heritage um, uh, brushes because they... Um, have a very nice point to it and they're really um, loose and, and um, really fun to paint with. Um, around the curves here on the back I'm adding a very concentrated paint also around the area where the shadow is around the neck uh, and just continue with this process until you're satisfied with how much paint you have there. Um, and the way to add texture is now to decide whether or not you want to add textures with more paint or add textures by adding salt, or add texture by adding water. And each of those will give you a different uh, effect. Right now I'm just adding paint, um, and I'm adding the paint in different strokes just to make sure that you know it looks like as if I have a um, um, feather. Now you can see when I go to the area where the crystals fall there, um, if I touch into any of the dry crystals, they will mix together and they will give you the green color. Um, and um, now just decide on the shadows and where you want to add more shadows. Some of the paint dried, some of the paint still wet. And if the um, paper dried out and you want to add more 
uh, paint to it and just go ahead and, and wet it again. Now what I'm doing here, I'm doing some blooms with the water. Uh, so different water blooms, you can see the effects now of this water bloom. And this water bloom will differ from one paper to another. So it's really nice to go ahead and experiment. And then after I made the paper wet with water, I'm going. I'm adding a little bit more uh, paint. Um, I mean, I could have decided that at this point the painting was done, uh, but then I didn't. So that's what you're going to uh, get out of that. So again, here just more more details. Um, in the in the back, I'm, I'm I'm here. I'm just doing very you know. Um, rapid brush strokes to resemble a um, feather uh, and I'm choosing certain areas where the uh, shadows could be between the phthalo green and then the phthalo uh, blue and literally these are the two colors that I used now I'm creating um, picking up areas where I want the more defined um, tail feathers to look like to appear um, and I picked up a few spots, whether they're white spots or already had some paints in them spots. But, you know, just pick a spot and go with it. Um, and it's just more of a, um, a side brush stroke or making the shape. Uh, and then you kind of have to wait for it to dry a little bit and then get a really concentrated paint. And make sure that your brush is not... Um, um, very wet when you do the second layer. So while the tail dries, I decided to do the crown. And now I'm just gonna uh, go with a concentrated uh, paint. You can see I'm, I'm checking to see if that's dried or not. And once you get the concentrated uh, paint with your brush, you can go ahead and, um, uh, and add the details. So the tail wasn't dry. Uh, so now I'm going with a smaller brush to do the details on, on the peak, on the beak. Uh, and uh, looks like the light is really shining so it's not very obvious but I'm just very fine faint details um, to create some shadows um, where the nose is and then some shadows under the you know the top beak and then the, the lower beak and then um, and just keep layering it until you feel that you're satisfied that it has a shape to it um, typically or ideally speaking if you have a round structure, you may want to have the top part of it as well as the bottom part of it um, more darker than the middle, and that will give you the curved structure. Now, painting the eye, uh, I usually go with a very um, uh, pale um, base, and then after that, um, make sure it, it dries out and then add a little bit of a darker shade making sure that I have the area where the white should stand um, and I'll leave some area for that white which is the reflection uh, now I'm adding a little bit dark on the crown and um, just a little bit of fine details there now I think the tails are dry so I'm going to go and pick a uh, dry my brush um, Again, adding more details, more more darkness to the uh, to the areas that I think deserve a little bit more um, attention. Uh, or you could stop and say, well, that's where I wanted to stop, but I would think I wanted to define the crown a little bit. And this is me really fiddling with the painting, um, sometimes to the point where I uh, make it worse, sometimes I make it better. Um, so this is a little bit of feather details that I'm doing uh, at different areas. Um, now we're going to the uh, details in the tail. And then... Um, I really like the um, the gold the uh, the gold here because like this gold color, it's almost like a yellow gold color. It really blends nicely with the blue. It almost blooms every time you do it. So I'm just creating that you know, um, few brush strokes from there. It's wet and wet technique, so I really didn't care if it bleeds or not. Um, but it did give a very nice effect that way.
And because I like that effect, I went ahead and did it a little bit more on other areas of the um, of the painting. Now I'm going to get the liner brush um, and the, um, getting some more green um, in, in, in the uh, brush. Um, not a lot of water, but just enough paint in the brush there. Uh, and I'm just going to create some details um, around those tail areas where it resembles a, um, a brush, um, the feather for the peacock. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm doing some fine lines and where I want the lines to be a little bit thicker than applying a little bit more pressure um, on the on the brush to make it in, so just to have the belly of that brush to touch the paper more. Um, and with that, there are a little bit more details required, but all in all, this is basically your peacock. And that's the final result.